Good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, and I eight o'clock or so. Yeah, it's like eight o'clock. And I was just getting ready. I woke up, got dressed, had a cup of coffee or two, and uh, I was going to get drive out and go get the eighty-five. I got all my stuff ready here, all on the back, ready to go. And I open the garage door. So I'm not going anywhere. What the hell? It was 50 degrees yesterday. I don't understand. <laughs> it's March. Stop. For the love of God. <sighs> Alright, well I guess I gotta move some cars around and get ready to fucking plow. Have a good one, folks. So, here we are. Um, I got rid of all the snow. Well, I wouldn't say I got rid of all the snow, obviously. But I uh, took care of all the snow duties at my house. And uh, decided I was going to grow a pair. Hop in the canyon and go on out. And get fuel. Well, here I am on Route 190. On my way to Interstate 84. And uh, this is a state road, so it should be plowed and sanded and salted and all that. Well, apparently out here in Stafford, they don't do that. So, it's a little bit of a handful to drive, but, um, yeah, it, it is a little bit of a handful. It's like I'm spinning all over the place here. Uh, so, I got a feeling I'm going to be taking the highway the whole way home instead of cutting through Stafford this time. So, uh, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit, and hopefully I'm not off the road. <laughs> Here we are. It's definitely not good right now. Um, it's literally sleeting out. It's, it's sleet all over the ground. This is not a smart move on my behalf. But we are getting fuel. It's a 19-gallon tank. Um, we're at a 12, smooth 12 gallons right now, so I don't know how much it used, but I left at under a quarter tank, so, and I don't know how many miles either, but um, we're coming up on 40 bucks right now, so I use a lot of fuel, so 15 gallons I'm coming up, so we're almost empty, so that's cool, and now I know where empty is, so I'm going to pause you for a minute. Okay, we are... Uh we're all filled up, and uh, I got my jugs filled, and we are actually on our way home on the other side of the highway, on the other side of the turnpike. I just want to pull this window up here so I can, you guys can hear me. This has got to be one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Straight stupid. Man, it is uh, from the other side's rest area all the way up to Auburn, it was straight sleet, ice. It was icing. I rolled my window down two inch and I was getting pelted with ice balls. Three accidents in front of me on the other side. There's cars off the road everywhere. Another one on the way back, just car would just go off into right off the highway and I got shitty fucking tires here and I'm just going 45 50 in the right lane and it's going nice and easy um this was definitely straight stupid on my behalf knucklehead but we are gonna forge through here um I'm just gonna go slow and just take it easy I've had a few but pucker in moments because when you're in the groove here 
it's not so bad, but when you try and change lanes, it just has a mind of its own. So I'm just gonna stay in the right lane and just be good with it. Um, and, uh, and I am really surprised on how I've seen one state truck on the mass bike. One. That's crazy. You know, I, I really thought Massachusetts took better care of their roads, but apparently I was wrong. So, all right, I'm gonna pause you guys and I'll flip the camera around so you can see what I'm dealing with. Okay, smooth sailing now. We are, we are out of, uh, off the highway and uh, we are on Route 190 where it is plowed, salted and sanded. And uh, yeah, we're cruising right along. I'm going as fast on this back road, state route road, as I was going on the highway. And I feel 10 times safer. Holy smokes, that was brutal. So, um, not the smartest thing I've done, but we made it back unsmashed and in one piece um, so that's a good thing uh, so I was going to do a project today because my multi combination switch the blinker high beam low beam cruise control all that rigmarole that switch is going bad in this truck so I thought it was a smarty pants and I ordered it off of Amazon and bum 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 wrong part. So now I gotta send that back tomorrow. So that's a bummer. In every aspect of the game, that is a bummer. So I have to try again, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna try good old Rock Auto, I think. Because it is uh, stupid money through my through my work. It's like three hundred bucks, and I'm not paying three hundred dollars for that. I'll go buy a used one before I do that. So, um, so that's not can't happen today. So, um, what else is going on? Um, believe it or not, my new camshaft for the second motor is actually got delivered today but I had it delivered to my work and I don't really need to go pick that up so because I have nothing I could do with it today other than look at it and gawk at it so that could stay there till tomorrow until tomorrow um and my valve spring should be in in a couple days so yeah my valve springs my front timing gear and bolts and it should be in like Tuesday, I would think. Tuesday or Wednesday. I know the gear and the bolts will be Tuesday. So then I have to order a 24X reluctor wheel. Because the new motor is a 58X. So what I mean by 24X and 58X, that is... The reluctor wheel that goes on the back side of the camshaft where the crank position sensor reads. With the old style computer like I have in this truck and like I want to use, that runs at 24 times. So, figure 24 teeth on the reluctor wheel. Now, if I was to use a 58 crankshaft with the old computer it would not be good it would uh it, the, the computer wouldn't be able to uh to read it properly so what i'm gonna have to do is with the new motor because it's a it's a 13 or a 14 is what the motor is i'm gonna have to take off uh, take the crankshaft out press the reluctor wheel 
off of the back of the crankshaft, mark it where it's got where where one and one eight and where zero and one eighty is. Then take it off. I'll mark the crankshaft, you know. And then we're gonna have to do the same type of thing that I did with the transmission reluctor wheel. I'm gonna have to put the crankshaft wrap, put it in a plastic bag, soak it in oil or whatever, put it in a plastic bag and put it outside. So the temperature will bring it down to like 20 degrees. And then I'm gonna take the reluctor wheel and put it in my oven, my cooking oven, at 500 degrees. I'll let that sit in there for a half hour. I'll go get the crankshaft prop it up and then we'll take the reluctant wheel out of the oven and slip it on the crankshaft and let it combine with one another because that's all they do is the, the reluctant wheel gets heated up and they slam it on the crankshaft it's a press fit uh, so zero to zero tolerance so actually I think that the hole on the reluctant wheel is actually the, the center hole in the reluctant is actually a little bit smaller than the crankshaft. So it's a one-time ordeal. You gotta, you gotta have it. You gotta have the timing perfect. You gotta have everything perfect. So when you slip it on, it's it's on for good. Um, even if I feel that there, there's a possibility that that reluctor might move, seeing that it is a uh, I could um, take my TIG welder and I could put four tacks with the TIG welder and then grind them smooth so they won't do any damage because there's no bearing there or nothing. Well, there's a bearing, but it's behind this retainer, so it, the tack welds will not hit anything. Um, I could always do that, and that'll secure it to be 100% perfect. Um, so that's my plan for this week um, to get that stuff started because this engine's got to come out that's just the facts it's got to come out um, and it is a huge bummer but it is what it is and then I have to have to I, what I, well, I shouldn't say have to. What I want to do is relocate my coils so they are underneath on the sides of the motor so there's nothing on top of the valve covers. And I want to take weld in some breathers so I can put the crank ca crankcase ventilation system that I bought. I can install that. So this will take all that positive crank, crankcase pressure out if there is gonna if there's even gonna be any because I I don't know there shouldn't be I know that boost is pushing right by the rings in this I know that 100% I know that with 100% surety so the new motor it's gonna be a little smaller I'm going with a 5.3 all aluminum it's a flat top motor it should make as much power or more believe it or not because I'll be able to you know bring this second thing up to like 7,508 grand so and not have to really worry about breaking anything because the aluminum block is a Siamese block is what it's called so it's way stronger than you third gen 5.3's second gen 5.3's first gen 5.3's way stronger so that's the plan for this week I'm just giving you guys an update uh, video because uh, I can't do shit today. And I'm waiting for a call back on my on a pellet stove. One of my buddies said he had one that he was going to give me. And then I left him a voicemail a week and a half ago. And I haven't heard anything back from him. So 
I'm gonna try them again today later on and see but that's about it thanks for watching folks don't forget to like comment subscribe check out my older videos um and uh have a good one